Hello, welcome back guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the first video of a series in which we are going to make a URL shortener in Go. Now, making URL shortener is actually a very simple task, but the idea here is for to learn Go through the process. And also URL shorteners are a bit famous as being the very entry level when it comes to like um, in, um, design interviews. So this is gonna be, give you a good experience doing something like this in Go. Uh, first up, I wanna show you what we're going to build. This is the code that we're going to go through together. Now we're not gonna do that now, but now I'm just gonna run the app. Uh, so now we have the app listening on, on port 3000. And then what I'm going to do, actually, you know what? Let me just clear up the database first. So I'm gonna just uh, clear up the database and then I'm just gonna run the app again. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to curl uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this request, which is basically a request that has a URL and a tag attached to it. So this is the long URL that we want to shorten. And this is the tag that we want to tag this uh, short URL with. It. And we have this is the first route that we can introduce, which is shorten. And if I do this request, you can see here on the server side, it took us 1.5 milliseconds, or 1.5 milliseconds to do this. And what we return back is basically uh, this short URL there. And then if I go back to my browser, I'm going to open a private window and then I'm going to go to 3000 this. And then now I go to the long URL. This is a, a very nice article about understanding concurrency and channels in Go routine. Uh, so that's the first one. That's the first thing that we can do. This is the first route in the app. So it's basically a route where you can post to shorten a specific URL. We also have this other route where you can actually get all the shorts that you have in the system. And this will give you basically all the shorts that you have in the system in a list. It's basically an array here of all the shorts that you have in the system. And obviously, finally, we have the route that we hit to actually go to the URL itself, and that's the one that you see when you go here, blah, 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 slash the short URL, and that's the one that does the actual redirection. Cool, so that means that the app will have only three routes. It's very simple, one route to post to make a short URL and store it in the database, another route to basically um, redirect you to the original URL, and a third route to give you uh, all the shorts that, that the system has, and that's about it. So again, the simple the system is very simple, and the idea is to teach you how to learn Go in the process and how to deploy this uh, as well, and how to make the Docker file and everything. Now, let's talk a little bit about URL shorteners. So URL shorteners, for us to understand kind of like how the system works, it's actually quite straightforward. Here is your server, and maybe we should zoom out a little bit. Yep, here is your server there. And then this server, as I mentioned just now, we will have uh, kind of like two routes, two main routes. One is going to be the route where you get uh, the short URL this way, right? And this route will simply just <clears throat> redirect to the original URL. And the way this is going to happen is that it's going to talk to the, to the database. So this is your database here. And then this guy is going to work by communicating to the database, getting the original URL and sending you back there. Uh, so that's the first route. And then there will be another route. And this route is going to be post to slash shorten, right? And this route is going to generate the short URL. So if I go here a little bit, so this route is going to basically just uh, generate, oops. So let's just say gen shorty, gen shorty, we generate the short URL. And after we generate the short URL this way, we will uh, store it in the database. So that's basically these two main routes. And then finally, there will be one more route here for us to basically get all. So you can go like this, and this is get all. And this is the route that will give you everything that's in the database. And again, this route will talk to the database right away directly. And that is basically our server. So it's really, really simple. Now, in real life, there is, there is pro if this is like a real project with so many kind of like traffic, with a lot of traffic happening through it, what we will usually do is basically have a cache layer here. We will basically have a cache layer here, and that cache layer can work based on multiple things, but usually it works on the hits. So what you want to do is basically cache your most requested requests, basically, shorts, and then uh, just get that served without hitting your URL. So basically, if a request comes for something that's being hit all the time, we basically redirect them right away without touching your database. And that is obviously to reduce costs. 
we are not going to implement this layer. We're just going to do the simple stuff of the server, having all these uh, three, uh, three routes here. And then we are going to make every single request hit the database. And that will work for our cases. Again, this is just for you to learn how things work. Another thing also to keep in mind is the choice of the database itself. Now, in my case here, uh, we're going to go with SQLite. I really think SQLite is, is a decent solution uh, for this, depending on how big you think th things are going to get. But this is a decent selection for now. Uh, there are a, a couple of considerations with SQLite that you have to keep in mind, but for this use case, it's fine. Um, if you want to scale this up to like a big, big, big traffic, you might want to go with a better choice in a database, uh, maybe a Postgres or a MySQL or something like that. We are not going to be doing that. It's going to be easy to use the things that I'm gonna teach you in the series to connect to a Postgres database, it's, it's actually very simple to do so. Um, the other thing also to keep in mind is this part here, is the gen, the shorty. Uh, now the generation of the short URL is quite interesting, uh, kind of like a problem. There are different ways to do it. The way we are going to do it is we're going to do uh, an MD5 SHA of, the, uh, of the, URL, the original URL, and then we're going to encode it and then take the first eight characters. Again, there are different ways to do this. What you're aiming to do is basically make sure that to create a function where the, the, the same input can generate the same output, and then the output has to be short and unique. And that's the whole point. Again, there are different ways to do this, uh, but the way we're going to teach is going to be the simplest, most straightforward way. You just create an MD5 SHA, and that is an uncryptographic kind of like um, SHA of the, of the actual long URL. And we're going to take that and then make it convert it into base64. So just to, uh, to change it from numerical, basically from numbers and all that stuff to something that looks a little bit easier on the eyes. And then we're going to get the first eight characters. You can get all the first five characters and so on. I usually try to stick to first eight characters to reduce the chances of, um, of basically collisions where you have the same there is a chance that you can get some collisions after you get the base64 encoding. Um, that's it. But basically, again, with uh, generating the short URL, the algorithm is very, very simple. It's not even an algorithm, really. You just have one long URL, you make a SHA out of it, and then out of that SHA, you base encode it, and then make sure that it's URL, like path name safe, and then you store it in the database. And that's about it. Um, again, this is this is a really, really simple app. It's good for you to understand how things work. Um, it's a really good practice. We are also going to be deploying this app to Fly.io. Fly.io is a fantastic resource. So you'll learn how to create a Docker file, how to push, build that Docker file locally, make sure that the app works, and then use that Docker file to deploy in Fly.io as well. Um, that's it. That's all we have in mind for this course. This is just a very simple introduction to the series and the course that we're going to go through. In the next video, we're going to start by making like a very simple mock HTTP client uh, in Go, and then we're going to push that uh, to Flight.io and just get it to work, and then we can build up from there. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay tuned.